Lord. We, we exalt you with our lives, our hearts, Lord. We lift you up and exalt you, great and mighty God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No other name, Lord. No other name. Thank you, Lord, for your name. Thank you, Lord, we're saved by your name. We're protected by your name. Oh, Father God, we stand in the power of your name. Sons and daughters of God. Thank you for ministering to us by your spirit, Lord God, and continue to minister to us by the power of your word as we come around your word. Help us, Lord God, to have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts like that good soil. In Jesus' wonderful name. Speak to us, we pray. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Please take a seat in God's house this morning. Hallelujah. Well, I just want to say um, thanks, Dan, and the team that went through to Blenheim on Wednesday night. It's a big drive now. You just, just can't cut through. You've got to go all the way down to the lakes and back up to Blenheim and then the back, the same route on the way back. So thank you very much to Dan and all those guys and gals that went over there. It's our last Connect, uh, Freedom Connect group for the year. Um, but I encourage the church to keep on talking to your friends and family members, particularly as you, as you come into the silly season and, and uh, family will come in and stay and you'll meet friends and possibly some of you might go and travel and meet, stay with family or friends. And wherever you go, talk about the Freedom New, Freedoms New Zealand Umbrella Party. Um, promote it. Keep on pushing it out there because our nation needs it. Because um, we all think we've gone back to normal because we can go to our local cafe and have our, our normal lattes and all that. But uh, the G20, the, the leaders of the most powerful nations in the world, this week signed uh, an agreement between all the nations uh, for the vaccination passports to be um, compulsory and uh, put throughout the world. So uh, that's going to be happening, uh, unless God does a miracle, that's going to be happening this coming year. Uh, that means you, won't, you and I, those that are not vaccinated, uh, we, and those that don't keep on getting your boosters, I think it's up to about 15 or 29 by now. Um, if you don't get, keep on getting your boosters, your vaccination certificate or passport will be null and void and you won't be able to travel. And so uh, that means international travel will be limited and then they'll bring the, the clamps down, down on us locally. And uh, this coming year, particularly after the elections next year, is going to be interesting. So keep on uh, talking to your family members in it. And... Um, at the moment, I don't know if you're aware, but some of the um, most evil laws are being passed right now, um, and things that no government has ever done or seen to be done have been doing it right now this week with the three waters, um, which is now five waters, and uh, they're making it statutory so it can never be undone by the governments in the future will not be able to undo this ungodly law that they're bringing in. And it's not just in New Zealand. The three waters thing is the name of the New Zealand government water grab. But it's happening in, the, in nations throughout the world. Nations, are, uh, governments are taking over uh, water supplies and uh, food supplies and f people's freedoms because they're not, it's not just trying to get rid of COVID, that's it's, it's way behind us now. Well, they're after to, to take over this world. The left wing, uh, and it's all part of end time doctrine, so if you're familiar with that, it's happening right now. Um, so uh, what I'm saying is Bible, and uh, the whole vaccine, whole vaccine passport is to bring in the mark of the beast. That's the outcome of it. So I believe we can, we can hinder that by bringing the truth to bear. And so talk about it with your friends and family members. Make people aware. Get them to vote for Freedom New Zealand's uh, political party. Um, and, this, and, and I don't know if you, um, you know, we all are very much aware. Uh, our mortgage rates have just shot up this last week. Uh, biggest increase ever in New Zealand's history. And uh, so you, you tenants are not going to miss out. Uh, your landlords will have to increase your rents to pay their mortgages. So everybody's increase. And, um, and to then hear the guy Orr from the uh, Reserve Bank say that 
He has been driving this recession. He's been the author of it and driving this recession to try and bring inflation down. That's like sort of trying to do an operation on your body with a chainsaw. There's a whole lot gentler ways of bringing down inflation. They don't have to drive recession. And my question is, why the recession? Well, I, I tell you what, the recession is a worldwide phenomenon once again. And uh, it will, it, the, the governments that are, the left-wing governments that are in power are um, hoping that and, and planning that the recession will continue to develop, worldwide recession will continue to develop into a depression. Like um, we had, um, none of us were um, old enough, I don't think, to remember the depression of last century. And uh, this one is going to be worse. And I believe that's what the governments are wanting because they want in complete control. So they have control of our water, they have control of our food, they have control of our freedoms, they have control of our speech. And uh, so we're in for an interesting time. So next year is a huge year for anybody that wants to keep hold of your freedoms. And the freedoms that we are familiar with in New Zealand and the freedoms that we have enjoyed. I'm 60 odd years old and I've enjoyed freedoms for my whole life. And uh, just the last couple of years when the government was starting to rise up and say, we wanna, we're going to take your freedoms off you. And I say, well, not without a fight. Not without a fight. And so um, I led the stands here in Nelson and, uh, and we will continue to stand. And I've, 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 I've been keeping on, um, I had about four or five people from the church join with me in the stands with the nurses and the health professionals because uh, part of the whole process of taking over the world and controlling the population is they've got to destroy the health systems. So the health systems, is, and once again, it's got very, they use COVID. They use COVID to destroy health systems. And so um, a, fu- a few of us, we stood at the church steps a couple of weeks ago with our health professionals who have been mandated out of work. There's over 1,300 health professionals out of work because of the mandates. That's ridiculous. In a day and age where people are dying uh, on waiting lists to, to see their, uh, to get into their local hospitals, you know, and, uh, and then a couple of months before that, uh, in the pouring down rain, I stood with the health workers and the nurses, and the pouring down rain came, came back absolutely saturated to the bone. But I'm a fighter, and, I, and, and some of you guys and girls are not fighters, so you won't have any right to complain uh, when we move into the new system. The new system is going to be called socialism or social democracy. It's another pretty word of saying communism. And that communist demon wants to attack and shut down the church of Jesus Christ as the first port of call. And if you have a look at all communist nations, and I've, been, I've traveled a few of them, one of their first attacks is on the church of Jesus Christ. They've got to attack us and shut us down because we, they know we are the only threat to their existence. So please keep on standing, keep on talking to people. Amen. Encourage people to vote for Freedom New Zealand Umbrella Party. Put their party vote to Freedom New Zealand Umbrella Party in next year's election. Amen. We've got a whole year to convince our nation. So we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of work to do. Let's get into the word anyway this morning. This is a child blessing service, child, child and baby blessing service. So I've entitled this Pleasure and Privilege of Parenting. Pleasure and Privilege of Parenting. It's a pleasure to parent our kids. Amen? It's a privilege to parent our kids. And I believe it's a stage of, of, of growth, of adulthood. So to, for us to become adults in faith and adults in the Spirit, um, I believe we've all got to be involved in parenting. Whether it be physically, and parenting in your own children, or like Elder Joe here, parenting the, the boys in the guy's flat, And you might think they're men, but most of them are boys uh, in men's bodies because of the damage that's been done to them. But Joe just got the job of helping them address their issues and through their man-up groups and their boys to men groups also to address their issues and to become men on the inside. Because we might be big, tough, 
um, black t-shirt wearing men on the outside, but inside we can be pussycats, broken down little boys, got a tough exterior, but we're a mess on the inside. And so Elder Joe is doing a great job uh, being a spiritual parent uh, in, the, in the guys' flat and helping those guys become men. Also, it's, it's, it's hard work being a parent, eh? Anybody, any parents in the house? It's hard work, but it's rewarding. It's rewarding, and it's, and it's a whole lot of fun, eh? Watching our little rugrats grow into becoming teenagers and then continue to grow and becoming adults and launching them into their lives. You know, um, I love watching uh, my boy in Christchurch, who's the uh, South Island manager of um, some IT bits and pieces, and, um, and then uh, Dan the Man launching out into being a teacher and program intermediate, and then Sharky working with growing fish and with the all the wacky scientists down in crop and food. It's, it's exciting to see the, 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 your child's dreams uh, come to fruition and, and uh, making an impact on society and, and flourishing in life. It brings great joy. It's rich and satisfying being a parent. Uh, some people, in their parenting, they feel inadequate. Feel inadequate. Many parents feel inadequate because they've had no good examples um, of what a good parent is and how to be a good parent. And so have a, have a feeling of inadequacy. And, and as I preach this morning, God's going to minister to you um, because there's no perfect parent except God himself. You know, it's interesting in Matthew chapter 6 when Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer. This is how you pray. And he starts the prayer, our Father. Isn't that cool? So don't call God God. Call him Father. Make it more personable. He's not an out there God. He's an he's a in here Father. He's, a, he's a, a God that wants a relationship with you and I on a father-child basis. Amen? So always relate to God as your Father. So when you pray, just call Him. That's why Jesus taught us. This is how you pray. My Father, our Father, who art in heaven. Just call Him Father. That's how, you would, that's how you talk to God, Father. Stop calling Him God. It's too far off. Call Him Father. You're a son, you're his daughter, born of Him. Amen? Imagine, you know, Paige and Lolly wake up in the morning. Oh, Pastor Martin Daly, could I have rices this morning? I mean, I'd feel very uncomfortable. That would, that would, that would disturb me greatly if, if my children addressed me in my own home. Uh, if they wanted something, as Pastor Martin Daly, you know. I'd go, don't do that. Don't call me that. You call me dad. Please call me dad, you know. And, and God's the same. He wants us to call him father. And he wants us to relate to him as our father. Now, many of us in this room have had not good fathers. Your earthly father was not good. He might, you, might not, you might not know him at all. He might have been an abuser. Uh, you just keep on forgiving him. Keep on forgiving him. Whenever you feel the pain or the memory of your, what your dad did to you or what he didn't do to you, forgive him. Keep on praying that prayer of forgiveness. Seven times, 70 a day. Keep on praying that prayer of forgiveness. Until you no longer remember the bad things, you've got to work at bringing up the bad memories. The, the bad memories are all gone. The pain of the damage that was done to you is all healed. Now you're free. Now you can think of your dad without, you know, knotting up on the inside or bringing a tear to your eye. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So, um, and, and like I said, there's no perfect parent. So stop beating yourself up, parents. I've had a couple of, you know, well, over the years, many parents come up to me and, and say, listen, I'm struggling in my parenting. And often it's single parents. And they say, I, I, I feel I'm making an absolute mess of parenting. And uh, the kids are in the church. And I say, I know your children. And your children are very good, which means your parenting is good. Might not be perfect. There's areas of improvement in all of our parenting. But... Um, I know by the fruit of your parenting, I can see it in your children's lives. They're good, stable, consistent, happy, friendly, confident kids. And so stop beating yourself up. Amen? 
you might you might be thinking, Pastor, I've, I'm, I've, uh, I haven't got any kids, so this word doesn't really relate to me, or I've raised my family and they've all left home. This is, I should have stayed home, really. Um, that's what some might be thinking here, but, but don't don't do that. I'm not here. To, it's not an educational class. There's going to be impartation into your life. There's something in this word for you here this morning. And I can guarantee God will speak to you if you keep your ears of your spirit open and the eyes of your spirit open and, he, and listen to what God is saying. God will speak into your life and most really bring about big healing in your life, I guarantee. Hallelujah. So no perfect parent, but there's also no perfect children. No perfect children. I know some of you might say, hold on, Pastor, I was a perfect child. Well, give me five minutes with your parents and I'll say you're not. Or well, five minutes with your teachers, and I'll say, no, you weren't. None of us are perfect. The only perfect child there ever was was Jesus the Christ. The only perfect child. The only perfect father was God. Hallelujah. So stop beating yourself up. Let's turn our Bibles, please, to Psalm 127, verse 3. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. Isn't that cool? They're a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Say, my child is a reward. Say, my children are awards. And some of you guys are single, and so you're, 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 you're prophesying that over your children to be. Your children that you're going to bring into this world and raise are award, are going to be a reward from the Lord. So don't, don't look at your kids like they're a pain in the bum. And, and I've heard parents say basically that, you know, you know about their child, and, and they've got the wrong perspective. And because they got the wrong perspective as a parent, that's exactly what the child will become. Because you look at your child like they're a pain in the bum, they will become a pain in the bum. And so you look at your children as a reward from God, a heritage of the Lord for you. Amen? They're a blessing. Say children are a blessing. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior. That's Us men went out archering yesterday, shooting these arrows all around the place. Um, I was hoping that we could have some live shots at Maddie, but no, he, the guy who was teaching us about our, um, archery wasn't too keen about that, and neither was Maddie, so, oh, well, maybe next time. Um, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. So our kiddies are like arrows, and if you think of an archer with an arrow, firing an arrow, the arrow goes a lot further than what the archer has. Are you with us? So... If we raise our children's well, if we raise our children well, they're going to go a whole lot further and achieve a whole lot more than what we ever did. And and if we walk with the Lord, we can undo the damage that was done to us, so we don't pass it on to them. So the cycle of dysfunction finishes with us, and that's what that's one of the great things of Man Up Legacy Boys Men Dimes Youth Nations. We can, we can break the cycles of dysfunction now, today, instead of passing on. If you don't break your cycle of dysfunction, the damage that was done to you, passed on down by your father or grandfather or parents, grandparents, you're going to pass it on to your kiddies. So address the internal issues. Address the damage that was done to you. Stop excusing it. Stop blaming that generation. You know, stop feeling sorry for yourself. You know, Bite your bottom lip and, and address the internal issues that are on you so you can set your children up for success. They won't have to struggle with what I've struggled with. That's what I, I love watching uh, Daniel and Marcus. They don't have to know anything of the, my struggles. I, they know it by, because I tell them from time to time as we joke about it. Um, but I don't pass it on to them. So they, they don't have to go through what I've been through. And I can remember when they were 18 years old and I would look at them and thinking, I mean, they, they still look like, you know, young kids and still behave like young children. And they're 18 years old and I thought, that is so cool. That is exactly how it's supposed to be. Because when I was their age, I was doing time in prison. And I thought, they imagine, I, I look at them and think, man, when I was their age, I was doing time in prison. And here they were, 18 years old, enjoying their teen years, uncluttered undamaged and wholesome 
having wholesome fun with her, with, with awesome Elder Joe and Big Yarn up in, in uh, 20, great, 20 kgs less Big Yarn uh, up in Auckland. Um, he hasn't had an operation. He's just been getting fit and healthy, good on him. Um, but uh, Elder Joe and Yarn did a fantastic job of taking Daniel and Marcus under their wings, and they would have all-nighters on the Xbox and all that. And uh, I slept like a baby. Um, as a single parent, I didn't have to worry about it. I knew they were with a good company and they were having, you know, all their teenage mates and having wholesome fun, doing all-nighters on the Xbox. And I thought, that is fantastic. They're flapping their wings as teenagers without doing drugs or alcohol or illicit sex or, or crime that I was doing and ending up in prison like I did. They don't have to do that. So ch- uh, parents, we can set our children up for success or failure, or by really how we are, how we are. Not so much what we say, it's how we are. If we're free here, they can be free in their lives. Hello? So it's, it's not a whole bunch of rules and regulations that we're passing on to them. You will do such and such. Now that's ministering and living out of, and parenting out of the tree of knowledge and good, of, good and evil. And it doesn't bring life. We need to parent out of the tree of, the tree of life. And bring life. Do I hear an amen? amen? Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. I've got five. I'm happy. That's me. Two grandchildren and five kids. Happy is the man. I'm happy. Are you happy, parents? Yeah. Any happy parents in the house? Yeah. Awesome. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Isn't that cool? So basically, because children are a heritage from the Lord, they belong to the Lord. Your children do not belong to you. You're a, you're a, I, my children do not belong to me. I'm a steward of them. They, they belong to God. God is their creator. He is their heavenly father. And he, he has committed my children into my care for a period of time to raise them in his ways and to set them up for success. What a privilege. And if we do it well, it is such a pleasure. Daniel and Marcus have never... And, and Lolly and Paige, never ever, and, and Nathan down in Christchurch, never ever given me one day of grief. My, all my kids have never ever given me one single day of grief. Isn't that cool? I'm not perfect, but I'm a good parent. Why? Because God has helped me address my internal issues. I could see the things that were, the negative things that were in mum and dad, as well as the positive things that were in them, that were in me. And so I could accentuate the positive while addressing and getting rid of the negative. And that's what I did as a young Christian. I concentrated on getting a lot of these weeds out of my spirit, these blockages and these hindrances out of my spirit. And, uh, and so I could be a good husband and I, be, I could be a good dad and glorify our great God. Do I and amen. Um, one of the most powerful things you can do as a parent is love the other parent. I'll say that again. One of the most powerful things you can do as a parent is love the other parent. And so for you single folk that are single parents, should I say, um, you think, well, how... I don't want to love that creep, you know. That creep doesn't deserve my love. They might not, but you need to forgive them because they're imperfect. And they're emotionally imperfect because of their, the way they were raised. So forgive them. Forgive your parents that have parented you wrongly and forgive your spouse for how they mistreated you and abused you and possibly abused your children. Hello? Children, if you've been abused, forgive your parents. Get free. Get free from the damage. God can make you whole and free and help you be a free, whole person in His image. If you don't don't forgive them, you can't get free. You can't get healed. And so you'll go through life with all this scar tissue in your soul, which will negatively impact every friendship and every relationship you have and has the potential of destroying your connections with your children as you grow older. And one of the sad things that I've experienced in my life is sitting and talking with my mum in the retirement village and trying to help her see why you're so lonely, mum, and why nobody comes around and sees you, mum. 
is because you're just so aggressive and nasty and critical. And if you would address that, because that there was in there, mum, because of your, what you went through as a kid, but you can address it, mum, and get free. So you can stop being critical and nasty and aggressive. And, 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 and so you'll have people come round. Grandchildren will come round and see you. But they don't, don't want to see you because you're just so nasty and critical and aggressive. You frighten the living daylights out of them. You should call a big vow, you know. 1964 New Zealand mud wrestling champion. I say that and introduce mum to introduce mum to many dignitaries. Well, this is my mum. This she's the 1964 mud wrestling champion of New Zealand. And so she would sit there straight faced. I'd sit there straight faced, and the person, the dignitary that we're talking to, and um, I wasn't bitter living mum. We're just having we're having a joke. And, um, and she knew how to play along very well, so she'd sit there straight faced, like it was true. And uh, and you see this person that would look her up and down. They go, "Yeah, she's got the stature for it, you know. A few scars there. Yeah, that could be true, you know. Anyway, let's move on. But one of the things you, if you're a single parent, never ever, and you most probably have done it, never ever diss the other parent." in the hearing of your children. And you might, you might, you might be still together with the, your, other, your spouse, the parent of the, your children. Never ever diss them in the hearing. Never ever speak negatively of the children's other parent in the hearing. You listen to me. If you speak negatively of the other parent in, in your children's hearing, you will damage your relationship with your children because in a child's heart, they love both mum and dad. They know mum and dad are not perfect. They, children, you can't put on the show. You might be able to fool adults, but I tell you what, you will never ever fool your kids. They know when you're going through stuff. Hello? They know that we're not perfect, but they still love us. And, and psychologists have told me that... Um, even an abusive father that has beat, their, beat the mother and beat the children, he is still their hero. Even though he's an abuser, he is still their hero. The pain and the damage and the scar tissue of that will come out in the child's teenage years, and they will often end up doing time and getting involved in, in uh, drugs and alcohol, abuse and crime and gangs, etc. But never ever speak negatively about the other parent, because you damage your relationship with your children. Hello? One of the great things you can do to win your children is to speak positively of that other parent, knowing that you're not perfect and neither is the other parent perfect. But for whatever reason, you don't need to go into the gory details, whatever reason, you can't be together anymore. Sorry, kiddies. Sorry for the pain we've put you through. From, for our family breaking up, family home breaking up. Immense pain in a child's heart. One psychologist that worked with children for over 25, 25 years said this, when, when the divorce happens, that's the day the child stops being a child. The psychologist worked with children and parents for over 25 years. And so it, what, what she was saying in that was the damage that's done to the child's heart stunts their emotional growth in their soul. And so they will struggle in their relationships and in life. Hello. But praise God, you're in the house of the Lord. Praise God, you're a man up in legacy, boys, men, dimes, youth, nation. You can address all this pain and dysfunction and damage that's been done. You can get free. You can get free. See, a problem doesn't get better by itself. They say time heals, rubbish. A lot of this dysfunction just buried, just festers, festers, and, just, and weakens and just does immense damage to our soul and will set us, set us up for emotional breakdowns, mental breakdowns, dysfunctional and broken relationships all our lives. We can address our damage that was being done to us and get free on the inside and set our children up for a successful life. Do I hear an amen? Give God some praise if you believe what I'm saying here this morning. Speak well of the other parent always. You might hunt 
for things to speak well about. It might be that they put the toilet lid down or something like that. You know, might, you know they pick up their undies or, you know, you've got to really hunt sometimes, you know. They did something good back in 79. Just exaggerate that a little bit, you know. Artistic license, just blemish that thing they did really good in 79, you know. And, and keep on speaking on that one thing, their whole kids' whole lives. And you'll win your, ch- you'll win your kitty over. Hello? Um, the most powerful thing you can do for your kids is pray for them. So your child might be on the other side of the world. The most powerful thing you can do for your children, whether they're right with you or on the other side of the world, is pray for them. Pray for them. It brings God to bear on your child's life. And you, you know how you love your child. God's love for your child is way more than what your love as a parent is for your child. God loves my kids way more than what I ever could. And so when I pray for my children, when I pray for your children, I bring God's presence to bear on their lives because God loves them and He will help them be the best them that they can have and have the brightest future they can ever have. Pray for your kiddies. You know, my habit as a, as a father is um, Daniel and Marcus, and I do it now with Paige and Lauren, uh, is to lay hands on them when they're fast asleep in bed, you know, um, and tucking them in. I'll lay hands on them and pray for them. So they might have had some struggles at school. I can deal with that struggle right then. I can talk with them in the daylight hours, but I can really, while they're still, while they're uncumbered, while they're just relaxed, I can lay hands on them and pray for them. I can, I can bring healing. If they're battling with an illness, I can bring healing to their soul. If they're, they're battling with relationships and friendships and not going well in their classroom, I can bring healing. I can uh, bring impartation, uh, get them filled with God's Holy Spirit, God's hedge of protection, God's blessing upon them. So lay hands on your kiddies while they're asleep every night. So from, from zero right through to the uh, sort of around about the 15-year-old 15, 15 age group, that's what I did as a, as a dad for Daniel and Marcus, and I'm doing now for uh, Paige and Lolly. And, and you're ministering into them. Powerful, powerful. Encourage you to do it. Um, be firm, fair, and fun with your kids. Be firm, fair, and fun according to their age group. So it's no good treating a four-year-old like they're a 14-year-old. And it's no good treating a 14-year-old like they're a four-year-old. And parents can do either. Don't do that. Based on their age, based on their maturity, uh, be firm, fair, and fun with them. And uh, you can't go too far wrong. I was, um, I was driving, driving along. I, I, I dropped, I dropped uh, Paige and Lolly off at schools, uh, at their schools in the morning. And... Um, so um, I was just driving along, and Lolly is, is she's um, year six, the old standard four for guys my age. Um, and uh, she's got such a maturity. She's only, she's only young. She's 11 years old, but she's got such a maturity in her soul, and she's got this great depth to her. And so she, she will talk about deep things, and you go, wow, it blows my mind. Some of the things she comes out with, some of her observations of me, of Sarah, of our marriage, of our parenting, of people in the church, um, of other children, and, 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 and really is it negative. It's often coming out of a, of, um, a real heart, um, how would you say, a, like a, just about like a pastoral heart, and she's always been like that, you know. Um, and, but I've got to remember that she's just 11, <laughs> She might be talking things like a 21-year-old, but she's not 21. She's just 11. So, um, so I'm not going to expect her to be 21, even though she might talk some of her stuff, particularly about, uh, her concerns about people, might be of a 21-year-old um, in, this, in the spirit. Uh, she's just 11 years old physically, so I'm going to talk to her mainly on that level. Are you with, are you with us? So don't. Don't force your children to grow up. Let them grow up. Facilitate it where they feel comfortable being young. And guard their innocence. 
because this world wants to pollute and contaminate our children's innocence, wants to actually rob, um, educate your children by definitely because there are many predators in our country that prey on children. So make sure you protect your children, uh, but um, don't force them to grow up uh, faster than, than what is comfortable for them. Are you with me? Um, single parents along this lines is um, your because I was a single parent for a couple of two and a half years, so I know. Um, you've got no other adult company in your house uh, when you're a single parent, and so you're and you can have a craving and a, a longing for 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 that adult company. And so what you can do is you can start to talk to your children on that level because you've got great needs. You can start to talk to children, your children, like they're an adult or like they're your, your partner. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. They are not your partner. They are not an adult. So there are things that you are going through as a single parent, hurtful things, carrying so much pain and loneliness and that. And uh, you don't want to push that onto your children. They're not able to carry the load of your pain as a single parent. So make sure you don't drive your children to become older than what they are because of your wanting to unload your pain and your struggles and your, the damage you have been through onto them. And don't talk to them and address them, particularly if they're a so you're a single mom and you've got a, 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 a son, uh, you know, it's your child. Don't talk to them like you're, they're your peer, uh, partner. You're, they're not your husband. They're not your partner. Don't talk to them along that lines, you know. And we can do it out of a desperate need, but we haven't thought it through. They're, if they're nine years old, talk to them like they're a nine-year-old. You need to take that desire to talk or need to talk on those levels to elders, man up leader, legacy leader, etc. Are you with us? Come to see myself, Sarah, make, make an appointment, unload that pain and that heartache on us. That's what we're here for. Your children don't, you'll damage your children and they can't comprehend what you're talking about and it will confuse them and, and damage them in their soul. Are you, are you with us? Don't feel condemned if you've done that. It's just I'm trying to bring an awareness to some of these things. Um, one of the things with our children, make it, make it your big goal as a parent, your number one goal is to enjoy them. Enjoy them. And you make it so that they enjoy you. Hello? So um, one of the things I try to do, all sorts of wacky things. You don't have to do stuff that I do. But um, I make up songs about them. And I sing them, whether it be in the kitchen in the morning or tea time, you know, when I'm doing the dishes, eating tea, driving them to school. I'll just make up some wacky song about how great they are and how gorgeous they are and how awesome they are, bloody blah, blah, and sing them these crazy wacky songs, you know. And, um, and I can remember, <clears throat> I've got a photo on my phone of Paige, I think she was about three or four years old and in the lounge, and she's playing with her Barbie, so I'm, I'm on the floor uh, beside her with her Barbie dolls, and I'm, I'm putting on the Barbie voice, you know, like you do, and um, and she's I'm just being crazy and wacky, um, talking Barbie garbage, you know, and um, just completely off the wall, and um, and she's just cracking, she's just absolutely laughing her head off in this photo, and me being w wild and wacky with her Barbies, you know, and she's got her Barbies, and I've got my Barbies, and they're communicating to each other, and she's just roaring with laughter. You want to you wanna have fun with your kids, and get your children to have fun with you. Get the, if you and your child can laugh together, you know, the, the old saying, remember the old saying in Christendom, the family that prays together play, uh, stays together? And that's true. A family that does pray, you don't have to have a devotion. Have a devotion if you're that way inclined. But pray together whenever there's a need. If there's a need, pray together as a family, you know. If one of you is struggling or sick, pray as a family for that person, you know. But I, and I think just as important as the family that plays together stays together also. So just have wacky fun. 
and, and make sure that you fill your house with as much laughter as you can. Because there's outside of your house, there's not a whole lot of laughter goes on. There's a lot of pain outside of your house, a lot of, a lot of dysfunction, a lot of crime, a lot of, a lot of murder and nightmare stuff outside your home. Make sure in your home it's different. Make sure it's sunny inside your house when it's raining outside. Make sure you bring laughter in your home. Amen? And husband and wives, um, we need to try and make sure that we laugh as much as we can. Keep laughter in your marriage and keep laughter in your home. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, tell them off if their behavior requires it. But make sure that how you tell them off is, is, um, is the same level as the, 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 the naughty behavior. And, and um, I've got a big hand and because um, and, uh, I was a painter, you see. So, um, and, um, and so I do, and I do press-ups. Uh, you might not think so, but I do. Um, and so um, I'm not as strong as, say, Elder was or anything like that, you know. Um, but I'm fairly powerful. And, um, and so when I smack my kids, I can really smack them. Um, you know, they can fly through the air at a, a single smack. <laughs> and so um, sometimes, you know, you've had a bad hair day, and you've cracked your nail and everything, and you come home, and, and the kids are misbehaving, and, you, and so you whack them. You've told them three or four times, and they carry on being naughty. So you whack them, whack, and they, you, you know, you've hit them too hard, you know. I know the government says it's against the law and it's all violence. What a lot of PC garbage. They don't know, they don't know how to get out of bed, barely. You know, so I'm not going to listen to any of their rubbish. Um, God says in his word, smack your kid. You know, if, they, if their behavior is warrants it, smack them. I, I, I'd rather listen to God than, than a Dern or any other clowns. <laughs> but what I've done in the times past, and Daniel and Marcus will nod, um, I've smacked them too hard sometimes, eh, Dan? And uh, Sharkers, have I ever smacked you too hard? Yeah. So, and I've realized, I know when I've smacked them too hard, I go, oops, the Holy Spirit says that's naughty. The Holy Spirit says to me, that's naughty. Their behavior was naughty, but now you smacked them too hard, that was naughty. And so what he wants me to do, what the Holy Spirit in me wants to do is to apologize to them. And I need to apologize to them because I know I've over, overdone it. So I, I've apologized to Daniel and Marcus and Paige and Lauren. Listen, sorry, you know, Dad's smacked you too hard. And, and, and they go, oh, that's okay, Dad. And I say, no, it's not. That's why I'm apologizing. I've got to put it right. And now, and, and I need you to say, I, um, I forgive you, Dad. And so they do. Daniel and Marcus and Paige and Lauren have, have said to me, uh, whenever I've apologized to them, I forgive you, Dad. And then, I say, and then I say to them, I need you to pray for me. Pray and ask God to help me uh, be a better dad and uh, not, not so aggressive and not so hard with the smacks and, uh, and to not make as many mistakes as I do. Hey, so that's good. What I've found is when I do that, when I apologize to my children, as, a, as their parent, and ask them to forgive me, and then ask for them to pray for me, their respect of me goes through the roof. Which means the next time I ask them to do something, because their respect factor is up here, quick. But if, say, um, I've seen some parents that hardly ever smack their children, but they would prefer to yell and scream at them. And every time you yell and scream, what that is communicating to the children is you have lost control. Because of their bad behavior, you have lost control as their parent, and you are yelling and screaming, and you have lost control, which causes their respect of you to go down. Because, you see, when you talk to them and smack them appropriately and say, I, that, is, that is inappropriate and it's wrong, and I've told you three or four times, so smack, don't do it again. They're, they're, if, you, if you discipline them properly, their respect of you goes up. And when you ask them to do something or tell them to do something, uh, they will do it a whole lot quicker. Hello? So, so stop yelling and screaming. Because, and, and there definitely should be no um, swearing, name calling. Don't curse them. Don't curse them. Bless them. Amen? Tell them why you're disciplining them. Because 
if you don't discipline them, then the police will in about another 10 years when they're teenagers. Hello? That's what the police disciplined me. Uh, not because mum and dad didn't. They did. They just went overboard with it, you know, particularly mum. As I said, she was the mud wrestling champion. So um, when she disciplined us, we knew it. Um, anyway, let's move on. Um, Proverbs chapter 13, and verse 24, please. Um, the punishment must fit the crime, eh? And, and, and part of discipline is not, it's not punishment, it's rewarding also. Reward the good behavior. So the rewards must uh, equal the deeds. Punishment fits the crime, but the reward equals the deeds. So um, punish the negative, the bad behavior, and reward the good behavior. Don't try and buy them off. A lot of parents buy their children's good behavior. Don't do that. It's, it's, it's going to have the opposite effect that you think it's having. So get them to do things, and when they do things, reward them then. Don't buy their good behavior. Reward it afterwards. It's all part of discipline. Proverbs 13, 24. He who spares or she who spares the rod hates their son or their daughter, but he who loves them disciplines them promptly. That's a powerful verse. If you spare the rod... You spoil the child, you know. You don't want to spoil the child. You don't want to wreck the child. So um, don't be slack and lazy in disciplining. I know you had a long day and it's been a hard day, but make sure you discipline them and do it. And it says do it promptly, which means don't let, don't do it two hours later or two days later. They misbehaved right now. You need to talk to them about it now, and you need to discipline them. Now, the discipline might be you're not going to listen to, you're not going to watch uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. Now, if I was a child, that would really impact me because I love SpongeBob SquarePants. It's one of the most best Christian programs there are on TV. Do it before they um, do that. Do it before they forget. Um, the, you know, when the whole anti-smacking thing that the stupid politicians brought through brainlessly, I love how New South Wales government did it. They did it using their intelligence. New Zealand government did it by demons, just influenced them. But um, the New South Wales government, what they did is they, they specified what was appropriate discipline. Isn't that smart? That is so wise. So they said, you don't punch your child with your fist. You don't boot your child, you don't hit them around the head, you can smack their hand, smack their arm, smack their bottom, smack their leg, and that's appropriate. No punches with your fists, no putting the boot in, no using weaponry, hello? A good hard smack on their hand or on their bottom or their leg or their arm is okay. And I thought, that is wise. Why couldn't we import the whole of the New South Wales government into New Zealand and export the rotten fruit that we have. Proverbs twenty two fifteen. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction will drive it far from them. That's what God says. That's a good one, isn't it? For your promise box. Um, or your child's promise box, whatever you want to do. Um, if you can't control your anger, if you do lash out with your fists and your boots, then don't do it. Don't do it. Get that other parent to discipline them or for, get another form of discipline. If you, if you find yourself lashing out with your fists, lash out with your boot, hit them around the head or something, don't you do it because uh, it's wrong and you, and you don't want to do that. It's damaging to your child. It's, it's not, not healthy. Smack them on the hand, on their arm, leg, bottom with your open hand. Okay? Okay. Um, Holy Ghost. So uh, we're teaching them what is appropriate and fair. Re make sure you uh, remember to keep on rewarding the good behavior. For every corrective word that you correct your children with, make sure you sp uh, speak 10 positive words into them also. 10 words of affirmation. Tell them how great they are. Tell them how, how brainy they are. Tell them what an what a awesome future Tell them what they're going to do in life. Tell them that they're going to become a doctor or a lawyer, a polit. Oh no, um, oh okay, a, a good a good politician, a good prime minister, a good MP, a good mayor. I know it's very hard to. I can see some of you are confused now. Pray for them, won't you? God says, pray for them. Um, so, teenagers. That's an interesting a stage of life, isn't it? 
as I said, um, Nathan, Daniel, and Marcus never gave me one day of grief their whole teenage years. You hear these parents talking about the terrible threes. I said, hell no. You know, when your child's one and two and they say, oh, you wait till the terrible threes. And I said, no, no, I'm not ever going to have the terrible threes. My, my threes are going to be blessed. My fours and fives and six and tens and fifteens and twenties, they're all going to be blessed. My kids are all they're going to flourish. Why? Because I'm going to work at it. I'm going to role model it. I'm not going to drive them. I'm not going to bash them. I'm going to reward them. I'm going to discipline them. I'm going to train them. I'm going to educate them also. You know, when, um, so, so like Daniel and Marcus, I'd say, listen, Daniel and Marcus, you know, sitting on the beach, you know, and you see the big flash fiberglass launch cruise by. Who would you like to be in, in life, Marcus and Daniel? Would you like to be the owner of that flash launch or the guy that's sitting on that tower, tower there that's mainly made up of holes? Which one would you rather be? Um, that and Kids are always going, I want a flash launch, Daddy. You know, well, you're going to have to work out at school and you're going to have to behave yourself. So that's why I address this wrong behavior because I want you to have the flash launches. I want you to have your own home. I want you to be the boss. I want you to do well. I want you to be a leader in society. I don't want you to be a casualty. I don't want you to be a prostitute. I don't want you to be an alcoholic. I don't want you to be a drug addict. I don't want you to be a gang member. I don't want you to go to prison. I don't want you to be a longest temporary employment worker in Nelson. I want you to have a bright future. Amen? And that's exactly what God wants for us. The path of the just shines brighter and brighter into that perfect day, God says. So that's what God wants for each one of us. He wants us to get better and better, life to get better and better, to improve every day, every week, every month, every year. Amen? Woo! And that's our heart for our children also. We want them to have more than what we've had. We want them to go further. We want them to achieve more. We want them to have a better life. Amen? We're not going to make them into idols. We're not going to work, we're not going to, our children are not more, my children are not more important to me than God. My beautiful wife Sarah is not more important to me than God. God is the number one. And because of that, I'm a good husband. Because God is number one, I'm a good dad. Amen? So make sure that your child is not more important to you than God. Because you made your child an idol, which means your whole life is upside down. It's inside out. Make sure God is more important. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, move on, move on. Yeah, teens. Teen, teenagers are children becoming adults. They're not adults behaving as children. And that seems like a play on words, but it isn't. I'll say it again. Teenagers are children becoming adults. They're not adults behaving as children. So, because you see, we have an expectation for adults and we have a different expectation for children. So if, if we get into the trap of expecting our teenagers to behave as adults, you're, you've got wrong expectations. So you're setting your child up for failure. You're expecting them to behave as an adult when they're still a child becoming an adult. Don't expect your teenager to behave as an adult. One day they might behave as an adult, but the very next day they might behave, they'll behave as a child. I think the teen years are so colorful. I love, I love uh, watching teenagers. I love watching kiddies, you know. And it's so, so wild and weird and colorful, you know. You, you know, um, I had a bunch of, bunch of the teenagers around home last night, and they were playing with Dan, Dan um, some weird game on, you know, censored, totally censored. I wouldn't have in such a, just Christian games on my, my <laughs> devices at home, just Christian games. Um, but to watch the teenagers and to hear them just roaring with laughter, you know, and, and to watch them at the archery and, they, and to see them riding their little scooters around, you know, and wild and weird and so colorful. I reckon it's, it's such an exciting stage of life. Poor parents are going bald real quick, um, but the kids are having a hell of a time, you know, and it, it's such a cool stage of life. Such, it's such fun, you know, so parents and Enjoy your teen, teenage years, not your teenage years. Enjoy your child's teenage years. Um, if you're 30, 40, or 50, don't expect your child to behave as a, a 30, 40, or 50-year-old. That's 
a, just a teenager. Let them be a teenager. Amen? They might want to do something wild and weird and wacky with their hair. Good. Let them do it. Not you, Daniel. You're 30 now. Um, and as your, as, the, as your child grows through the teen years, they're going to test the boundaries that you've had on them through their childhood to protect them. You've protected them from themselves, and you've protected them from predators. But those boundaries are not appropriate now as they move through their teenage years. Remember, they're children becoming teenagers, and so they're going to test the boundaries that you as their parent have put on them with their newfound freedom. They're going to clash with your boundaries. Now, don't take it personal. You know, your preteen and your teenager are starting to clash against your boundaries. Don't take it like a personal rejection. They're just going through the normal stages of growth of becoming an adult by clashing and, and testing the boundaries. And you, don't, you shouldn't have boundaries on your 13-year-old that you had on your 9-year-old. So you've got to change and alter the boundaries as they prove themselves responsible you, you f loosen up the boundaries, and the next day they misbehave, you tighten them back up again, and then they do well, and you loosen up, and all the time, you're talking to them through why you're doing, why, you're, why, why, why are you taking their smartphone off them, why you're not letting them anywhere near the laptops, why, you, why, why have you changed the, the Wi-Fi passwords, you know, why, why can't I watch SpongeBob SquarePants, you know, and you're 50 years old, um, You've got, to, you've got to alter the boundaries. Are you with me? Um, pick your fights, parents. Pick your fights. I see some parents, their whole parenting is just like this one, just a nonstop fight with their kids. And I thought, oh my goodness, you're setting your kids up for just a, not a good life. So do, make sure you pick your fights. Um, and so you major on the major and minor on the minors. Don't major on minors. And so, so, so what's worthwhile, particularly in the teen years, different when they're little, you're teaching them lots and lots and lots. Um, and they'll go through, you know, they'll go through a patch sometimes, three or four weeks, so you, tell, you feel like you're telling them off every single time, but you're educating them all the way through, and you're shaping them, and then you'll, you'll get a, a bit of a breather for a couple of months. You will hardly have to address their wrong behavior as a child. But as a teenager, um, it's, it's different. Are you with me? Um, so pick, pick your fights. What, so when Daniel and Marcus were in their teen years, and now Paige is starting, she's going to be a teenager next year, um, I'm just going to have to be, be wise and because we've been there before them, we're wise. Hey, we're trying to protect them from the mistakes that we made. So, but um, pick your fights. Uh, so you major on the major. So if it's life-threatening, win that fight, you know. If it's, um, you know, they're, you're, they're into, you're, you hear they're experimenting with drugs or they're, they're drinking alcohol with their mates, win that fight. That's a fight I'm going to win. I'm, I am going to win it. I never, I never, I never uh, go into a fight with my teenagers to lose. I am going to win the fight, which means I'm going to be shrewd. I'm going to be shrewd. I'm going to say things and do things and manipulate the situation. Um, I'm going to be devious because Jesus says, "Be as hard, uh, be as wise as serpents." So this, like the devil, be wise as a snake and as harmless as a dove. So this has this parenting. So you be you be way you you're about five steps ahead of your teenager, and they think they've they they're amazed how dumb you are. Um, so so when it's a major issue, I'm going to win that fight. I am going to win it um, at all costs. I'm going to win that fight, and the fight doesn't stop until I've got the victory. Um, so however long it takes to get the victory over, I'm going to win that fight. But if it's a minor thing, they want to you know cut the hair in a weird way or. The, they're on the Xbox. It's not life-threatening. Hey, you know, nobody's ever died of a, a weird haircut. Not that I'm aware of anyway. Um, and um, whether whether on the Xbox or not, for two hours or four hours, uh, who gives a toss? 
I know some of your parents do it. Really up your, it really gets up your nose, but I think, well, you haven't really had too many major incidents in your life, and you're making a minor into a major. Um, it's not life-threatening. It's not a mi- it's not a major. So I'm not gonna. I'm gonna if I've if I've had some major fights with my kiddies and they want to cut their hair in a weird way and they're a teenager, I'll cut it for you. <laughs> or if they've been on the Xbox a couple of hours longer than when I wanted them to be, I'm not going to lose any sleep. I'm not going to pick a fight on that one because I've just, I've just had two major battles with them this day. I'm not going to add a little minor battle. I'm going to let that one slip. I'm going to ignore that one. I'm not even going to speak about that one. I'm going to try and distract them if I can, but I'm not going to pick a fight on that one. So don't, don't pick a fight over every tiny little issue. Keep the majors majors and keep the minor minors. So if it's a major, if it's life-threatening, pick that fight, win that fight at all costs. If it's a minor issue, let it slide sometimes. They'll think, oh, God, pull one over Dad's eyes. Yeah, right. Um, are you with me? And 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 not not everything is smacking in that. It's you know like I said, uh, no Xbox for the next week. Um, I love that one. Eh? Um, um, no smartphone tonight. Gosh, that really gets the mates. It's just like, you know, <laughs> you know, the crumble in a heap in the fetal position, the rocking back and forth. <laughs> They're 18 years old. You know, it's amazing, eh? Because they're high tech, they're into their devices nowadays. So you you be use those devices against them. <laughs> Such fun, you know. Right, no smartphone now. And then watch them curl up and weep like a little, you know. <laughs> you know go away with a big smile and <laughs> celebrate that victory. Um, and uh, you know, t- changing the Wi-Fi password and not giving them that—that's another goodie. Uh, it's very easy. Um, or hiding the TV wand. That works wonders. All sort of, you know, hiding the laptop from them. You know, there's no devices. And they, they go for, you know, they go for days hunting around for the, de- <laughs> they're like a meerkat going through your house, you know, and <laughs> crying the whole time. And you're going, yeah, yeah. Um, don't try and be their friend all the time. Make sure you're their parent first. Our children, need, need, your, your child needs you to be their parent first and their friend second. Make sure that's the priority in your heart also. So you don't relate to them as a friend first and a parent second. They need us as parents. Children need us as parents. So be their parent first and their friend second. Now, you might have been horrifically damaged by rejection uh, throughout your life. Uh, don't parent out of your rejection. So, you, so if you, you're frightened to discipline them because you might be rejected by them. And so you don't reject them because you're frightened of being rejected by them. Because everybody's rejected you throughout your life, and the last person you want to, uh, to reject you is your children. And so you pull back or hold back from disciplining them. Don't do that. Don't do that. You be their parent first. Um, yeah, they might they might call you names through their teenage years, and they might say they even hate you through your through their teenage years. You carry on, and 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 I can guarantee when they are in their twenties, they're going to come back to you. They're going to say, "Mum, Dad, I want to thank you um, for not not bowing to my manipulation, and my nasty words, and my rejection. And thank you, Mum and Dad, for continuing and being consistent and." You know, that'll, that'll happen. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. Um, as, as, I'm going to finish on this. As, as parents, um, when we uh, raise our children well, it, it honors God. And because we raise our children well and honor God by doing so, He will honor us. As we enrich our children, so God will enrich us. As we bless our kids, so God will bless us. Because remember, at the end of the day, they, they're His children, and we're just stewards. So set them up for success. Hand them well. Ask God for help. This is one of the great things. God, God's Spirit is on the inside of us, and He just needs to be asked 
help. God, I need your help. Fill my heart with your love for my children. Fill my heart with your peace uh, over my child's future. Fill, fill my heart with your wisdom to know what to do and when not to do it. And what to say and when not to say it. And when to reward them and when not to reward them. When to punish them and when not to punish them. God, give me your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And Holy Spirit, help me to be the best parent that I can be. Amen? Can we all be upstanding, please? If, you've got, if you want your child blessed and they're through the kids' um, DK, you can slip out of your seat and go and get them and, and bring them in here. And uh, we'll, we'll have, we're going to um, bless those kids. Um, can we have that top off the oil? Get that, well, let's just have that oil ready. That would be awesome. And if you bring your kid, children up to be blessed and dedicated to the Lord, um, when we come to and lay hands on them, say their name because I'm blonde and sometimes I forget their name. Um, doesn't mean I reject them. It's just sometimes not the cleverest. Um, so just tell me their name so as I pray for them, I can pray for them by name. Amen. Holy Ghost. Father God, thank you, Lord God, for this awesome people. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, you've called us to parent your children and to raise them up in your ways, to set them up for a successful life. Thank you, Lord God, for helping us, Lord God, to address all our pains, internal pains and dysfunctions, to get whole and free on the inside. So, Lord God, that we can parent our children well and, Lord God, not pass on our dysfunctions to their lives. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord God, for anointing us to set our children up for success. And Father God, if we're single, Lord God, if we've raised our families already, thank you, Lord God, we can put a lot of this into practice today. They might be in their 40s and 50s, but still, Lord, we can put this stuff into practice today. Well, Lord God, we can apologize for the things we've done wrong to them through their childhood today. Father God, thank you, Lord God, that, Lord God, we might not ever Lord God, uh, are able to have children. Thank you, Lord God, we can put these things into practice as we handle people in life, whether it be in our classroom, our workplace, in our home, our neighborhood. Thank you, Lord God, that we can put a lot of this stuff into practice in our ministries, in our lives, 24-7, Father God, wherever we are. Thank you, Lord God, we can um, be a parent and, and carry your Father heart to people in every area of society, wherever we go, irrespective of our age. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Parents, can you bring your little kitties forward, please? Awesome stuff. And um, congregation, um, what I love, no, no kitties want to be, okay, let's, cafes open. Oh, no, here comes some now. Aren't they gorgeous? Awesome stuff. Coming to the middle there, guys and gals. Awesome stuff, that's the way. Holy Ghost. Beautiful, eh? Turn, turn around and lift your little kitties up and show the congregations your, your beautiful child. What a gorgeous, aren't they? So uh, congregation, I just want you to stretch out your hands and your faith and impart the blessing of God upon, upon these awesome, beautiful kids. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you, Lord God.